More poll numbers from the latest Talk Business and Politics Hendricks College survey. Time to look at President Trump's job approval ratings. We asked, do you approve or disapprove of the job President Donald Trump is doing? 47.5% approve, 45.5% disapprove, 7% with no opinion. And State Senator Jim Hendren, Republican from Gravit, now joins us. He's no stranger to the waves of political fortune. Welcome back to the program. Good to have you with us. Thanks, Roby. It's good to be here. What's your take on those numbers there for Donald Trump? It's probably a good year to not be running for re-election, isn't it? For probably about anybody. <laughs> I, I think the take is there's a lot of frustration with Washington, with Congress, uh, with the inability to get things done. And I think you'll see uh, people being less happy about the, the direction that our country is going until we start getting some things done. Uh, so Republicans are not happy because things aren't getting done and Democrats are not happy because uh, things are trying to get done that they don't want to get done. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of frustration and unhappiness out there and uh, it is. It's a, it's a tough time out there to go out and try to uh, say we're doing the great things when not much is getting done, particularly at the federal level. And independents are just frustrated with Republicans and Democrats. I so. think they are. I, I think they are. The, the independents, uh, I, I really do think that who captures those in the next four years is going to have a huge impact on the direction of our country. All right, we're going to be rolling out more poll numbers in uh, the next couple of days, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll be anxious. I may get your take on a few of those, too. Let's move on. You have a new project that you've been working on, I'd say, for several weeks, if not months. It's called Shot Val. You're a former Air Force pilot, so I, I, this sounds like something out of a Top Gun movie. Tell me a little bit about what Shot Val is and what you're trying to do in terms of these report cards that are out there that, uh, that, that rank legislators. Well, the term shot valve comes from a tradition that fighter pilots have after a training mission. Before you go do the debrief, every person that flew and called a kill shot goes back and looks at their tape to validate that the kill shot they called was in parameters, that was the right weapon, that it was a valid shot. Because when you call a kill shot on somebody in a, in a training engagement, they have to go f remove from the fight and then be shamed in the debrief. So you better make sure you have it right. So before you come to the debrief, you have to make sure that the, the shots that you're taking are valid and can be assessed as in parameters and a good shot. Well, when we, these scorecards, and they're getting to be more and more of them. I, I looked at eight uh, different scorecards. And one of the things that was interesting is, and, and I, I thought there had to be somebody take a look at why there is such a variation. Uh, we had two groups, conservative groups, that have almost ideal, uh, identical, uh, mission statements about less government, less regulations, lower taxes. One of those groups scored a senator with an F, said he was absolutely the worst Republican senator in the Senate. Another group scored him as the number one Senate uh, in, in the entire Senate with, again, two people with the same mission. So as I looked at that, I said, either there's two senators down there with the same name or something's going on with these scorecards. <laughs> well, do you think that these scorecards, these report cards that come out from a variety of different interest groups, uh, left of center, right of center uh, as well, do you think that they're valid? Do they serve a purpose or do you think that they are just political props that are going to wind up in campaign literature somewhere? I think they are primarily political props that will end up in campaign literature. The, the influence that they have, though, is, and I, I think it is waning because now there are so many of them that it's beginning to be lost in the noise, but occasionally legislators get an email from a particular organization as the vote's coming up, this vote will be scored. In other words, putting them on notice that you'll see push cards in your district if you don't vote according to the way that we want you to on this particular issue. And obviously that's part of the political process. My point of this project was if you're going to do that and if you're going to represent how people are vote, then you need to be accurate and you need to portray factually what the legislator did and what the impact of the legislation was. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we've got some who pre play pretty loose uh, with the rules. Well, you're going to get plenty of feedback on this uh, project, I predict. Let's shift uh, quickly in the time that we have left and talk about the tax reform task force that you're a part of. I sense that you guys are still in a very much a study mode right now, but um, do you see anything consensus building at this point? And how does federal tax reform, which could upend just everything that you guys are talking about, impact this? It, it's, uh, it, it could impact it. Again, obviously, what the, every, there's a lot of concern about what they do with the state and local deduction and the impact that has on, do we focus on income tax or some other tax because of the impact of what the federal, just like healthcare, they have such an influence on how we have to react to what they do. 
But these task forces, and you, you know, this is the third one that I've worked on, and this is exactly the same pattern. They're very slow starting, and, and it takes a long time to gather the data. And that's really the phase we're in. I think the, the meeting that we'll have next month will be one of the first where we really begin to get some substantive data uh, about where Arkansas sits and how we improve our position. We're going to be talking about sales tax and excise tax. In the December meeting, we're going to be having representatives from several other states, from North Carolina, from Indiana, from Oklahoma, from Kansas, come in and tell us uh, what they learned as they've gone through reform. As you know, some of them have had good success and others have made a mess of things. Tank the state, yeah. That's right. So we want to try to learn from their, their mistakes and also from what they did well. And we'll also be looking at property taxes in December uh, because, again, that's a huge component of how we fund education. Uh, there's a lot of in order to make major changes, you'd have to amend the Constitution, mm -hmm. which we did back 20 years ago because of some Lake, Lakeview ruling and other right. things. So it's going to start getting more and more uh, interesting over the next few months. All right. We'll be watching that. We'll have you back on to talk about that. State Senator okay. Jim Hendren, as always, thanks for being with us. Thank Appreciate you, you. you All right. Arkansas Children's CEO Marcy Doder joins me right after this word from our sponsors. Don't go away.